Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome to our YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us for an opportunity to hear the grace of God. Make sure you like, comment, and share, and enjoy the message. I want us to do this morning, I want us to go to 3 John 1, verse 2. 3 John 1, verse 2. I'm coming from the Amplified Version. 3 John, verse 2. I'm coming from the Amplified Version. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 3 John, verse 2. I'm coming from the Amplified Version. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Once again, 3 John 1, verse 2. First word, everybody say beloved. beloved. Come on, say it stronger. Say beloved. beloved. Beloved means that you are the one that God has chosen to love. You are the one that God chooses to love. You are the one that God has chosen to love from the foundation of the world. Beloved, watch me. John is saying, beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health. Now, anybody in the room, you make sure I'm not out of context when I say that. Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. That word soul, John is referring to who we are in the spirit, a soul that has been or that is renewing to who you are in the spirit. He's saying that how your spirit prospers, I pray that your relationships prosper, that your body prospers, that everything prospers. I'll read it again. Beloved, I pray that in every area, every area, say every area, every area. say every way. every way, you may succeed and prosper, say prosper, prosper, and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. I want to entitle this sermon by what um, some people may consider a controversial, controversial subject. I want to entitle this sermon very simply, Prosperity. Prosperity. Look at your neighbor and say prosperity. 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 God, I thank you that as I teach this on today, God, I thank you for a boldness to say what you want me to say. God, I thank you that I hold nothing back. I say whatever the Spirit of God wants me to say on this subject. God, I thank you for the presence of the Lord never leaving us nor forsaking us. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. 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 High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I, love you. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sis. I appreciate you. Listen, did anybody in the room, did you grow up in a household where there were certain words you couldn't say? Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm sure that most of you grew up in a house where you could not use profanity. And if you did, you know, in this generation, what would happen is called abuse, right? I'm, I'm just saying, what, 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 what would happen, you know, is called abuse. And definitely in my house, you couldn't say certain words. And then also, too, even in my house, you couldn't even say the substitute words. Like, you couldn't, you couldn't say dang, you couldn't say shoot, you couldn't say shucks, you couldn't say freak, you couldn't say none of that. Because you still wanted to say the same thing, you just substituted it for a different word. And I think that in the body of Christ, we try to substitute this word because this word is like a cuss word in certain circles. The word prosperity in a lot of churches, in a lot of Christian circles, in a lot of movements is looked down upon because of the manipulation and control that we've seen behind it. But just because there has been manipulation and control behind it does not mean that this word is not biblical. The word prosper is biblical. If you do your due diligence in studying the word prosper, it means to succeed. It means to have an advantage. It means to thrive. I personally believe by revelation of the word of God that the word prosper, prosperity, is in the heart of God for his people. Let me say this early. Prosperity does not look the same for everybody. And let me say this early as well. Prosperity is not only money. 
You can be prosperous in your relationships. You can be prosperous in your anointing. You can be prosperous in your marriage. You can be prosperous on your job. The problem has been we've taken this word and we've only used it towards finances. And we've used this word and we've taken it. And now people, man, has coined certain teachings as the prosperity gospel. Anybody ever heard that term? The prosperity gospel is a term that's formed by man. It's not in the scripture, but it's coined by man to point out a specific type of teaching where people have said that if you have faith in God or faith in Jesus, God can make you rich. Or people have even went to even more extremes and said, if you sow into this type of water, the blessing of the Lord will come upon you. Or we've had people say that if you sow into this specific prophecy and give this specific amount, the, 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 the heavens will open and God will pour out on you. And the reason why people don't like this word is because we've seen so much damage and manipulation. But the first thing I want to do is I want to show you, and some of you already know this, I want to show you that this word is in the scripture. The Bible says in Psalms 1 verse 3, watch me, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, God is talking to the children of Israel. But watch the principle for I know the plans that I have for you. God is talking to Israel plans to prosper you, not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future. Watch the last one. Isaiah is prophesying. Isaiah says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth and it shall not return to me void, Drew, but it shall accomplish that which it please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Billy Isaiah is saying that whenever I send out a word, it will prosper for the thing of which I sent it. That whenever I declare a word, whenever I give the word of the scripture, whenever I say the word of the Lord, it will prosper. It will bring forth something. I believe that not only the word can prosper, but I wholeheartedly believe that you should prosper as well. I just believe that. Understand something. Let's, let's get into this early that the word prosperity is in the Bible. But the reason why people don't like the word prosperity is because of everything that comes behind it, especially in this generation, because what, what, we, what, we, what we've been messed up in, we've we've been. We've been tricked by social media unintentionally to make us think that every church is a mega church and that's not true. You know what the average size of a church is in America? 75 people. It's the average size. Might be lower now because of COVID. All these pastors that you see, mega churches, you know what a mega church is in this generation? If you got 300 people, you're a mega church. Well, you know, when we were growing up, you had to have 1,000 plus. It's 300 now because the body of Christ, not the body of Christ, but the church numbers have dwindled. And what happens is when people see 2%, of, of, of pastors, any big name pastor you name, that's only 2% of the church. Most pastors have a job. Most pastors do not live off the ministry. Most pastors, the average age of a pastor in America is 55 years old. I'm super young in the ministry. The average age of a pastor is 55 years old. 55. And a lot of times, we see a wrong perception of the ministry. Therefore, we're not rocking with the prosperity gospel. and We'll deal with that. So we go to the other extreme and there's also the poverty gospel. And the poverty gospel is. You don't need money. All you need is Jesus. Let me be clear. I believe that every believer should be content in Jesus. I believe that every believer should be happy with Jesus alone. I believe that every believer, if you're not happy, if you don't have joy with Jesus alone, nothing will satisfy you. But one thing I also believe that God did not give Jesus for you to live in lack. Amen. I don't believe that. I believe that every believer 
should have their needs met. But one thing I just cannot get down with, I don't believe that every believer will be a millionaire. And some believers don't want to be millionaires. Especially in the South. You know what people want to be in the South? Comfortable. You ever heard somebody say that? I just want to be comfortable. A lot of people don't want money. You know why? Because a lot of problems come with money. What B.I.G. say? More money, more problems. That's true. Now listen, if you desire that, if you desire that with the right heart, there's nothing wrong with that. But we cannot get up in the pulpit and say that it's the will of God that every believer become a millionaire. Can't say that. Can't say that. Can't say that. Can't say that. She was talking about tax invasion. You can't say that. Can't say that. But 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 the poverty gospel says that you don't need money. Be content in Jesus. Give away everything you have. There are some people, which I think is cool. It's a dope um, documentary on Netflix. It's called Minimalism. Go check it out. It's called Minimalism. These, these are people, they don't have, they, they literally give everything away. This one guy, all he has is his MacBook. He got two shirts and he just travels. Got a book bag and he just travels. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is some people, they're taking that and say, this is what the gospel look like. We don't need money because money is evil. And that's unbiblical because money is not evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. I got Bible for it. The Bible says this in 1 Timothy 6, 9 through 10. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. The love of money. It's nothing wrong with money. Listen, if you think money is evil, just stop working and just sit at home. If you're going to have a home to sit in because you're going to get kicked out, you don't pay that rent. If you don't pay that mortgage. So, you know, you might as well just sell everything and just be OK. If you want to do that, that's fine. But money is a resource. Money is a tool. Money is not evil. You know what's evil? The heart that you had the money with. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You can't serve God and mammon. That word mammon is translated as money, but it's deeper than money. It's the spirit behind the money. You see, there's nothing wrong with being there. There's nothing wrong with having riches. The question is, does the riches have you? And listen to me, there are some people, especially in this generation, remember we grew up in the 90s, so we, we understood that, that when you were a celebrity, that was a privilege. I remember CeeLo Green said something. He said, when I was coming up, he said, when I was coming up, being a celebrity was Ivy League. Now it's a public school. Because anybody can be one now. Anybody can be one now. If you look at like the star stars of today from the 90s, they're very like quiet. They're not, they don't talk because you didn't do that. It's like you, you, you hear that, but not everybody wants to be a celebrity because they're chasing something. They don't feel content. And listen, I have no problem being an influencer. There are some of you in here, you're an influencer in some type of way. But listen to me. The question is, are you going to allow God to influence you or the money? Listen, I ain't got no problem with nobody in here getting to the bag now. But the question is, will the bag control you? When the bag controls you, you'll do anything for it. You'll lie, you'll manipulate, you'll cheat, you'll steal, you'll do anything for it. That's what, that's, what, that's what Timothy is talking about. The love of money is the root of all evil. Let's get deeper into this. Watch me. The gospel is not prosperity, but prosperity can be produced by the gospel. The gospel is not prosperity. You know what the gospel is? Watch me. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Simple version of the gospel. Gary can give you a definition. Drew can give you one. This is mine. Jesus became like us so we could become like him. Jesus became like us so we could become like him. And listen to me, y'all. We have to stop using Jesus as, as, as just a way to get rich. If you want to be rich in something, be glad that you're rich in mercy. Be glad that you're rich in grace. Be glad that you're rich in forgiveness. Be glad that you're rich in purpose. But listen to me. There's nothing wrong with money, but money cannot be the number one goal. The number one goal is Jesus. The goal is Jesus, guys. The goal is Jesus. That, that's the purpose of Christianity. That's the gospel that Jesus lived a perfect life that I could not live. He came down and became like me and watch me. And when he became like me, I became just like him. The Bible says this in 1 John 4, verse 17. Love has been perfected among us in this. Stop. 
Love has been perfected among us in this. One of the most clearest revelations that you have to have is that you are under a perfect love from God. That the love of God towards you is perfect. And the love of God that, that comes towards you is perfect and it has nothing to do with your imperfections, but it can change your imperfections. Watch me. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Why? Because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. Bianca, it did not say as he is, so we will be. It didn't say as he is, so we were. It says, as he is, so are we in this world. Whatever Jesus is, that's who I am. If Jesus is healed, so am I. If Jesus is whole, so am I. If Jesus is prosperous, so am I. But the reason why we cannot reconcile that is because everybody's not walking in health. One of the most critical lessons I learned in the ministry very early. I'll tell you the story. This, this young lady I was kind of cool with in school. She uh, she had lupus and she was sitting on the side and Gary, she was leaned over and she was she was hurting. And I went over and I prayed for her. Now, I grew up strong word of faith. You lay hands on the sick, you pray the prayer of faith. They got to be healed. Right. OK, so I'm walking away in my Christian pride. Yes, yes. I lay hands on the sick and I'm going to watch her be healed. But then at lunchtime in the cafeteria, I noticed her eyes got real yellow. And you know, I'm just looking at her, just noticing her. And then I believe by 1245, one o'clock, I'm in class and the door is open and this young lady runs down the hall weeping and it shocks everybody because she was crying hard. Professor picks up his phone and says, class, we're going we're going we're going to cancel class today. Because the young lady who I prayed for, she passed. She died. I was done. Faith rocked. Because I thought when you pray for somebody, they're going to get healed. The pastor I was under at the time called him broke and crying. He told me this. He said, Kane, you got to learn this very early. That just because you pray for somebody does not mean they're going to get healed. I did not want to learn that lesson that way, but that's the truth. And it has nothing to do with God. Everybody who has healing in their spirit. The Bible says that by his stripes we are healed. That's available to every single believer, but every single believer will not walk in healing. And watch me. This is what the prosperity gospel teaches. It's not because you don't have enough faith. It's not because of that. Because internally, we really don't know what people believe. Some people don't believe that God wants to heal them. Some people don't believe that God wants to prosper them. So you can lay hands on somebody and you pray the prayer of faith and just because you pray it don't mean it's gonna work for them. They ain't got nothing to do with you, the power of God, that's all based on them because they're a free will moral agent. And what they believe is on them. People believe different things about the word of God. But, but the reason why the prosperity gospel have gotten such a bad rap is because we teach stuff like that. Let me give you three problems with, with the prosperity gospel. Number one, number one, the prosperity gospel teaches that you have to have a level of faith. That if you don't have a particular level of faith then God can't bless you, God can't heal you. But one of the main phrases that people will say is that the reason why that person didn't get healed is because they didn't have a level of faith. But that doesn't make sense because, Gary, didn't Jesus say that all you need is a faith the size of a mustard seed to move a mountain? So you mean to tell me I need a level when God said all I need is a seed? Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Hold on. The Bible says this in Galatians 2 verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I live in the flesh, and I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God. What does that mean? That means when I heard the gospel, faith was deposited in me. You know, faith is a fruit of the Spirit. Faith is a fruit of the Spirit. So if faith is a fruit of the Spirit, how, why do I have to work for fruit that was already planted in me? Come on, let's talk Bible. Faith is already on the inside of you, your son. When you heard the gospel, faith got deposited. You believed in Jesus. And watch me. All the faith that you have now is all the faith you need. The Bible says that God has dealt unto every man the measure of faith. It's only one measure. 
It ain't, it ain't, you, it ain't, it ain't a 10 plus 5. It ain't a 5 by 10. It ain't a 20 by 100. Everybody in the room, every man of God, Kenneth Hagen, Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, every single one, whatever, whoever, Mike Todd, Stephen Furtick, whoever, John Piper, John MacArthur, they all got the same level of faith you got. Because what we've done is we place men of God on the pedestal and we made other people make, we made other people feel as if they're lower. If they don't have a big church, if they don't have a Bentley, if they don't have a certain type of watch, every person in the entire world, you're living off one faith. And that's the faith of Jesus. The question is, do you know that you have faith or are you trying to work, trying to increase something that's already built? Because listen to me, a lot of people are distracted because I need to grow my faith. I need to get it larger. No, what you have is all you need. That's it. You don't need to have a certain level of faith. You, whatever you got, that's all you need. Watch me. Number two, the prosperity gospel teaches that you have to earn the prosperity of God. The Bible says this. Watch me in Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9. Y'all know this. For by grace you have been. Come on, say it stronger. For by grace you have been. For by grace you have been through. Ah, 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 ah. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Y'all know this. For by grace you have been. Through, for by grace you have been, through, that word saved in the Greek is sozo, say sozo. That word sozo is not just delivered from hell. It means to be whole. It means to be prospered. It means to be delivered. It means to be healed. It also means prosperous. Do you do diligence in the Greek? Find it. So what you can say is, for by grace you have been healed. For by grace, you have been delivered. For by grace, you have been whole. For by grace, you have been prospered. By faith, watch the next part. Not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. You can't work for God's prosperity. Let me reiterate, God's prosperity is more than money. You can have all the money in the world and have a bad marriage. That's not prosperity. You can have an account with $100,000 in it. And you can't keep a friend. That's not prosperity. You can have all the money in the world. And you can't walk around with your mind saying that ain't prosperity. Prosperity is having peace in your mind. It's having uh, 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 peace in your relationships. Listen to me. Watch me. I want you to do something for me. Pull out your phone. Pull out your phone real quick. Real quick. Real quick. You got your mobile banking app on your phone? Pull it out. Look at it. Now cover your stuff up now because you, you might have some scammers in the room. <laughs> might have some scammers in the room. It might be some Tyreeks and uh, <laughs> some Canaan's in the room. P put it. Go ahead, go ahead and pull it out. Pull up. Yeah, pull it up. Pull it up. Pull it up. Cover it up. Cover it up. Cover it up. Cover it up. Don't look at it. Cover it up. You got it out. All right. You see it. You see that number. You see that number. Okay. What the enemy wants to do is make that number in your account your self worth. What the enemy wants to do, I don't care if you got 5000 10000 100000 I don't care if you got $10, I don't care if you got $500. What the enemy wants to do is make you look at that number and say, this is all you have, when that's a lie. Because watch me, if that's all you worth, you ain't worth much. Your worth is not in your account, your worth is in Jesus. And listen to me, watch me, understand something. When you understand that your worth is in Jesus, anything that you receive here on earth, it belongs to God. But watch me, anything that you receive on earth it is a gift. You can't work for it. And the prosperity gospel teaches that you got to read your Bible to get wealthy, that you got to that you got to pray to get wealthy, that you got to that you got to live right to be blessed. Understand something. Ain't nobody in this room living that right. Nobody. Am I neglecting holiness? No, but watch me. Holiness is not my behavior, but my behavior can be changed by a revelation of holiness. Because understand something, prosperity has nothing to do with your pocket, but everything to do with revelation. Do you have an understanding of what Jesus came to accomplish? Jesus did not come down for you to just be saved from hell and have fire insurance. Listen to me. If you need money in this room, there's nothing wrong with having money. We got to get set free from that. We, 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 we got to. Because every single one of you in here, you look good. And it took money to buy them clothes. I saw that jacket at H&M two, two, two days ago, and I know the price of it. It took it take money to get that. I'll get ready to go back and get it two weeks from now. So if you see me wearing it, don't be mad. But listen, 
It take money to get that jacket. That's a nice jacket. It take money to get that. You got my cowboy jersey with some dunks. It take money to get that. It do. Everybody in this room, you need money. Don't you need gas? You going to eat after this? Don't you need money? Y'all pay rent? Don't you need money? All right, then. So we got to break this mentality that you don't need money. If you need money, you need money. We got to stop acting like God does not want to give it to us. And watch me. He might not drop it in your account. He might. He might not only drop it in your account. He might give you a promotion. He might bless you by making a move. The question is not the money. The question is, do you trust in God's provision? Number three, we got to move. Number three, another thing that the prosperity gospel teaches is that if you're in Christ, because it's also called the health and wellness gospel, right? That if you're in Christ, you'll never have pain. You'll never suffer. If COVID-19 has not taught you anything, is that the spirit of God is not teaching people that if you're in him, you'll never have issues, you'll never have problems. God doesn't teach that. One thing Jesus said is this, watch me. John 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you, he was talking to the disciples, and he said this, that in me you may have peace, because in the world you will have trials and tribulations. Watch me. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I've overcome them. Listen to me. You can have all the money in the world and still have problems. I'll never forget. Uh, what's the guitar player name? John Mayer. John Mayer said something very interesting. He said, it's amazing that celebrities, they pay millions of dollars for security. And every day they let in people through this. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. People live to terrorize other people on social media. Always, they do it. People in this room, you can get promotions and you still might have issues, but understand something. Because I am in Jesus, I've already overcome them. Understand something, that prosperity is not just a number in the bank account. It's a perspective. If I don't have everything I need, I have everything in him. And because I have everything in him, I can believe that he'll provide everything that I need. You see, there, there's going to come a time where you're going to have to look at that mobile banking app and you're going to have to say, God, this don't dictate me, but I thank you that I have whatever I need. You're going to have to say that because in our midst of trying to debunk the prosperity gospel, which we should, we have missed the fact that God is still a provider. If I don't know anything else about the Lord, I know him to be a provider. I, I, I don't know your testimony. I don't know. But, but, but I serve a God who provided the garden for Adam. I serve a God who provided a ram for Abraham. I serve a God who provided rain for Noah. I, I serve a God who provided a raven for Elijah. Even Paul in prison said that the same God who takes care of me, he shall supply every one of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I know God to be a provider. And let me tell you something about the Lord. I got Bible for it. Remember in the scripture when Elisha went to the woman and the woman said, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we don't, we don't have anything. So we're going to make this food. And we're going to die. What he said, go look in your house. Paraphrasing the story. At the end, they found something to sell. And not only did they find something to sell, they had more left over. The Bible says in Ephesians that we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. Can I ask you something? Have you ever believed God for something and he did more than what you expected? We serve a God who's able to do more than what we expect. I've seen it done. I've seen it done. I've seen it done in this ministry. i never forget. i never forget when our first building. First building, it cost about $4,500 to get in there. Now you a new church plant. I don't have $4,500 to get in the building. But the spirit of God told me sign the lease. And, and you, when we signed the lease, we signed it on Thursday. On Saturday, somebody gave our finance guy a check. And it was the exact amount we needed to get into the building. I know him to be a provider. There have been times where I did not know where the money was coming from from rent, but God paid the bill. 
Let me be very honest with you. Let me be very transparent because that's how I have to be as a pastor. Ready Church doesn't pay me a dime. Not right now. It doesn't pay me a dime. If I was to tell you what I make from my current place of employment, it ain't enough for, to provide for five people. But God sustains me every single week. He pays the note. He pays the bill. He buys everything that I need because I know him to be a provider. The question is not does, does, does prosperity have an amount. The question is, do you trust God to provide? That's it. Now watch me. Does God want us to be prosperous? Yes, but prosperity is not just money. He wants you to be prosperous in your family, prosperous in your marriage, prosperous in your mind, prosperous in your anointing, prosperous on your job, prosperous in your relationships. But watch me. But prosperity can be a blessing to you financially. Listen to me. There's nothing wrong with having money. Just don't let the money have you. Can I get ghetto? What, what, uh, what homegirl say on Players Club? Make that money, baby. Don't let the money make you. Some of y'all in hood, so you know that. <laughs> listen, but that's true. Because listen to me, you can get so caught up in making money that you'll lose your family. You get so caught up in making money that your relationship with God will not be as fruitful as it once was. I'm not saying that you won't be saved, but the time you used to spend with him being in the word, you'll be so focused on making money that you're making more money than you're not spending time with him. And he's the one that opened the door for the opportunity. You can be so busy trying to make money that you're no longer having any fruitful relationships. You're not having any consistent accountability. Yes, get money. There ain't no problem with getting money. That's fine. But understand something, you're not like the world. You're not like the world. Understand something, the world, you ever, like, when you listen to music, you listen to songs by people like Drake and the Migos, and they say stuff like, I'm always grinding, I'm nonstop. They ain't got no choice. Think about it. They don't have a choice. Now, don't get me wrong, Drake is filthy rich. But watch me. Drake has to grind. Where's his source? Now, I don't know if Drake's saved, so let me put that out there. So I'm assuming he's not saved. Oh, I know who ain't saved. Let's take Playboy Cardi, right? <laughs> Am I saying something wrong? Being for real. He, 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 he claims to not be saved. Okay, but is Playboy Cardi filthy rich? Yes. Filthy, nasty, rich. Okay. He ain't got no choice. He ain't got no source. He, listen, you have something that the world does not have. You got a source. Yeah, that's good. And not only will he provide you money, he'll give you peace. Why do you think these rappers, they stay high, they pop? We live in a generation where rappers rap about popping pills. We don't live in a generation of the hustle more. We in a generation of the fiends. Wow. They pop pills now. They have no peace. They have no peace. The Bible says that Jesus will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. That if there's a week where I don't have any money in the bank, I still got peace. If there's a week where I don't have no food in the pantry, I still got peace. If I feel like everybody's going crazy around me, I still got peace. That's prosperity. When you can have peace in the midst of a storm, that's prosperity. That's prosperity. That's prosperity. I've been to third world countries. I walked and I've seen people who opened up their cabinets and had nothing, nothing, nothing. But I've also seen men of God get off a plane and fill up an arena and tell those same people, God wants to make you a millionaire. And, and you're thinking, how? This is why people can't reconcile a lot of this teaching. But one thing I have seen I have seen people from those same circumstances still have their needs met. You know what's funny? You ever been overseas? Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's amazing how American contentment is very different. It's very different. It's very different. It's very different. It's very different. They won't have shoes on their feet 
but they'll show up in the rain to a revival. But we get mad when we miss a sneaker release. Let's be real. We, we get mad if the internet cuts off. We get mad if somebody didn't put enough tomatoes or lettuce on our sandwich. We, we, we get mad, ladies, you know you do that. Think about the stuff we get upset over. Just think about it. And listen, you can't help because we come from a different culture, different, we live in America, it is what it is. But, 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 but the prosperity that God wants us to have needs to be more about him and less about our possessions. Can you have possessions? Sure. Y'all got nice stuff. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. But that in itself is a prosperity. At the end of the day, as the old saints used to say, as long as I have Jesus, I don't need nothing else. I, I, I understand the needs that we have, but the Bible says in Romans 8 verse 32 that him who did not spare his only son, will he not freely give you all things? Watch me. Everything that you need flows from Jesus. Every bill that needs to be paid flows from Jesus. Every issue in your life flows from Jesus. If you focus on Jesus, everything else will be met. That's the, that's, that's the, that's the sermon. There. If you were blessed by what you saw and you enjoyed the message and you feel led to give, you can give at Cash App, dollar sign, Ready Church CLT, or at our church website listed below.